Do you want to learn how to grow good food plots? Well, then you are in luck because Food Plot Chronicles season six is now in session. Season number six. Number six? Number six. Man, I'm getting too old for this stuff. It's hard to believe. We've been on a lot of journeys together already. But Tag and Brag Nation and Rocky Fam, welcome back to season six of Food Plot Chronicles. Now we're gonna be doing things a little bit different this year. In years past, we took you through literally step by step of what we do and how we plant each one of our food plots. So you've seen us spray the fields, till the dirt, fertilize, sow the seed. And I'm not gonna say we're not doing that anymore, but this year we're gonna dive a little bit deeper. We are gonna be taking you through a strategic setup of each one of our food plots. Meaning, we're gonna show you where we set up our elevated blinds. We're gonna show you where we set up our tree stands in relation to those blinds. We're gonna show you what we plant in the food plots and why. We're gonna show you access, entry and exit routes, super important, and anything else that goes into the strategy around hunting that specific plot. We're here to help you. We wanna make you better deer hunters and land managers. And it took us many years and sometimes learning the hard way to get it right. So if we can fast track that for you, money in the bank, baby. Now the first field that we are starting on is a field that we call Santa's Field. Why do we call it Santa's Field? I have no idea. I mean, we got nicknames for our bucks. We got nicknames for our food plots. We got nicknames for just about anything. Santa's Field was a subpar cornfield last year, but it was the first time that we had ever planted this field before. The soil is super sour. And last year was a little bit of trial and error. So this year we're hoping for big things, big things and big corns. We're gonna start by moving an elevated and a fiberglass box blind up onto the top apex of this field. The reason we're doing that is so that we have better opportunities to hunt marginal winds come late season. We're gonna take you through the planting process of this field. We're gonna show you our XOP setup in the corner. Lord willing, she grows just right. As always people, there's a lot of work to be done and I'm talking a lot. We gotta get to the field, let's go. We're on to uh, move blind at number two and erect a new banks. It's big boy stuff here, big boy toys, big boy activity. It's a big old blind. If I've ever seen one. You think we should try and drop this thing first and get it on the... Because you want the, the other blind to go right in there, I'm assuming, right? Or close? I think so. I don't know where else it would go. Well, no, I mean... Uh, that's where it should There's go. Only, only our spot I'd put one is in front of the shoes, but that's a rifle spot. This was a rifle spot this year only, but it doesn't need to be. No. Well, I think... Yeah, now swing it in. The new banks. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is sick! Can you hear me? <laughs> that is nice. I mean, that's nice. <laughs> hey guys, this part's loose. This is loose. <laughs> this is pretty nice. I would hunt here. Would you? Um, that's right, 
dark. Yeah, I'm on here. This is a sick spot. Let's see what we got. I think it's great. I wouldn't change it. That plate still up there? What? Plate. There's a loose plate on Well, yeah, that's for. Yeah, yeah, those are nice. Nice. yeah, it's a nice blind. Good job, everyone. Spread. We got this 26 gallon tank in the back of our side by side, and we are using this product from Whitetail Institute. It's called Impact. It's a soil amendment. It's going to dramatically increase the forage rate. Um, it just improves the soil. It's going to add some potash and. Um, some nitrogen to the soil and uh, some calcium carbonate in here, kind of as a replacement for your lime to increase the pH. It's gonna allow your 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 crop to uh, absorb more nutrients in those low pH soils. So it's just a, it's a nice soil amendment for those hard to get to areas, or like I said, if you don't have time to go rent a big ag lime buggy and you don't have a tractor to spread it with, this is a great, tool to use right on the back of your four-wheeler. All you do is you put a little bit of water in your tank, you fill this jug, it's a granular, you can hear it. You're gonna fill it three quarters of the way full, shake it up, shake all that water, mix it up really good, and then you're gonna pour it right into your tank. Um, these are like quarter acre treatments. So I'm going to do an acre. I'm gonna put four of these right in this tank and fill it up all the way, and then empty this whole tank on the uh, on the acre, and this will help our soil where we can't get the lime. So pretty awesome product to help be a little bit more efficient, a little bit more cost uh, cost efficient and save some time if you don't have that big equipment. y'all we've been working pretty hard on this field it's uh for some reason it's being a little stubborn it's not drying out a ton at least this whole lower section is not so we're gonna prep everything above that that's dry enough to plant we're gonna get everything ready and we're still gonna plant it here in the next four days uh if we can and if we have to leave that unplanted we can come back in a couple weeks and try to get something in the ground there but while the weather is allowing us, we got a plant. So this field was first worked for the first time in decades last year. We plowed it all, dissed it down, didn't even lime it or anything. We just planted corn. It came up okay. I would say okay. Um, we went a little light on our on our seed rate, but that was our, our mistake. But it came up actually better than I thought it would, and this soil is not good. The hay that was on here before was not good. Um, you can just tell it's a real sour soil, so we're gonna come in. I'm disking now, and David's coming through with a liquid lime. We're gonna put it on pretty heavy on this field, and hopefully we can get a little bit better crop this year, get our drill calibrated a little bit better than we had it last year, and hopefully we can get a good stand of corn. This is a destination field. We had deer and bucks. We had, we had deer in here through January and even February, and we did not have, oh, probably a third of the amount of food that we ha we could have in here. So we're trying to make this feel as best we can so we can stack up the corn. Uh, uh, Let's Just got done riding the bull, feeling the flow, happy. So, I mean, this field's not perfect. This this field's gonna take a couple of years to really work down what we want it to, and probably could use a plow or a bigger set of discs in the future to really knock it down. But it's gonna be good enough to plant and do what we want for for deer plots. We're not harvesting this stuff, so it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but we hit this thing 
shoot, I think three times now with a disc to really try to knock it down, but we never plowed it, so it needed to be hit like that. Big field, <laughs> three acres. Well, at least that's big for me. David's spraying down the lime right now. And we got the fertilizer, but I'll put that down in a couple days when I'm getting ready to plant. And then we'll go rent the drill and get stuff in. It looks like we got a, definitely a chance for a storm tomorrow, but two days after that are no rain. And then it looks like after the weekend, this Memorial weekend, we're gonna get, it looks like several days of, of rain, at least good 50 plus percent chances. So we have never planted. We've never planted in May. Um, I don't even know if we've planted in the first couple of days of June. So this is early for us, but it definitely feels good to get uh, for the, the weather to allow us to get up, get going on this stuff a lot earlier than normal. I like it, I like it a lot. This field was a complete test last year. Like we said, I don't, since I've been born, this field's never been a crop. So it was new dirt. It never grows good hay, even though it looks good on the sides right now. Maybe that's because we worked it a little bit last year, but field's looking really good. It was in pretty rough shape last year. And uh, yeah, it's, it's looking really good. And it was really effective for the little amount of corn that we had in the, in the field. Like I said, there was probably about a third of the amount of corn that we could have had in here. I think I just had the, the rate on the drill not good because it just didn't, didn't plant enough corn in there. The corn that did grow, the corn that did grow grew pretty good. So we're just, we're anxious. This is a nice, nice feel. Like I said, the deer were in here until late, late season. So if we can get more, if we can get double the amount of corn that's in this area, we could have some deer really, really using this in November, December. So getting it all prepared, getting it in early. In case anything happens, we gotta replant. You know, you just adjust. You just adjust. Just coming up to one of our newer XOP setups. Dave hung this stand at the end of last summer. Had some great, great hunts in it. And this is a sweet setup. The XOP and this particular tree, it's a little, little curvy and split at the end. So the XOP allowed us to be able to have the flexibility to adjust it and sneak it right in the crotch of this split cherry. It's absolutely dynamite. And uh, it's all safe, safe in there with the lifelines and everything. But this particular spot is, is right on the edge of one of our larger food plot fields. It's a two and a half, maybe three acre cornfield. And I just had to jump in one of our XOP stands just to feel it, get the juices flowing a little bit. Anticipation is already building up. We're seeing some velvet bucks already, getting my heart thumping and I cannot wait for the upcoming season. But we just planted this whole field behind me in corn over the last four days. It's about two and a half to three acres. It was just planted for the first time last year. The soil in it is not good. It's an old hay field and it never really produced much hay at all. So we chose to put corn in here for that reason alone. And the fact that it's one of our bigger fields at two and a half, three acres, it provides more of a destination field for the deer, especially end of October through that whole late season, we're gonna have hopefully a good stand of corn in here and get some get a good amount of deer coming in. And this stand in particular is in a dynamite spot. 
it's at the corner of this field. The predominant winds are usually like they're blowing right now, right into the face of this stand. Southwest, west, northwest winds, right, right into the face of the stand. And behind the stand is a massive ravine. So our mindset is our winds and our face, and it's going to blow right over the top of everything behind me in this ravine. We did, we put corn in here to provide more of a destination field for deer. It's one of our bigger fields at two and a half to three acres. And we didn't even lime it last year. And we got a fairly decent stand of corn. It, it wasn't the best, but it served its purpose. We did put some lime down this year. We're trying to condition the soil a little bit to improve this field. We planted it all in corn again. And hopefully in the next four or five days, we start seeing corn sprout. But I cannot wait to sit in this stand come late October, through the end of the season in December when we get a lot of deer eating the corn here. We'll plant some of the edges and turnips and uh, and then have an opportunity to, to brush hog some corn and stuff to have an opening for this stand later in the season. There's a tunnel of cover to get into this stand so nothing can see you in this field. And like I said, the wind opportunities right in the face blowing over the ravine are just absolutely perfect. And the XOP setup made it super easy to hang in this little split cherry tree that we got i shouldn't say little but it's not the straightest tree and the xop stands allowed us to get in it super easy we hung the stand in 30 minutes and it was one of david's in particular's favorite stand to hunt last year he had some great rut hunts we're looking forward to getting in this particular setup come october let's go we got a four-wheeler trail that comes out right at the mouth of this field, right at the center of the mouth of the field. The stand is right there. So you got a 15 acre, 15 acre, 15 yard shot right down this path. Bunch of cover that way, bunch of cover in a beaver swamp that way. And this will hopefully be a work in progress cornfield. We're just looking for a little bit of a better stand than we had last year. We'll fill in anything with turnips if we need to. And that's a dynamite spot. As you can see how thick it is, especially in the early season, getting in and out of here is super easy because anything that's up in this field, number one, there's a, little, there's a little knoll in the field. So you have that cover to begin with, unless something's right on this side. But if something is on this side and you're trying to get out in particular, maybe in the evening or in in the morning, there's just so much cover that we pushed up against this wood, at, the wood line right here on the edge of the field. And as soon as you're 30 yards down that path, you're, you're pretty much out undetected. So it's a great setup. Wind right in the face, blowing over that ravine. And I hope this XOP stand produces an awesome hunt and a good buck this fall. We're really looking forward to it, folks. And stay tuned with us on Food Plot Chronicles to see how this destination field's growing. All right, so let's recap this a little bit. So we started by moving a hard blind to the top of this field. Couple reasons for that. Number one, this field is gonna be hunted later in the season and in inclement weather. This blind is gonna keep us out of that inclement weather. Also, with a predominant west wind over the backside of the blind and into the field, we wanted to put a hard blind up here so that we could maximize hunting marginal winds. There's certain cold fronts and there's certain situations where it doesn't matter what way the wind's blowing, you gotta be in that spot. And this is gonna allow us to at least take our chances. We also went through tilling, disking, fertilizing, and planting this field all in corn again. And Lord willing, it'll be a good growing season. Dino will be happy and we'll have some big old ears of corn. And finally, we took you through our XOP setup, which to be honest, is one of my favorite spots on our entire property. I love the access up the backside of the hill with any sort of a westerly wind. It's blowing out over this bottom and it's such an awesome spot to sneak in and out of. And the deer, especially late October and early November are using the backside of that corn field for communication with scrapes, they're checking for does, and the bucks are cruising through there all the time. Now next week we're going to be traveling over the hill. We're going to be talking about our clover plots and how important they are for the whole land management setup. The one clover plot that we have in particular is just over the hill from this cornfield and it provides an amazing 
ambush early season. It's gonna be awesome connecting the dots, especially with these food plots and how we hunt them over the next couple weeks. We are super pumped to have Food Plot Chronicles back and you along for the journey. And we'll see you right back here next week for the second episode of Food Plot Chronicles. It's back! It is back. Yes, yes, it's back, baby. Food Plot Chronicles is back. Back.